All right, so welcome back everybody. Um, we're so pleased to be joined today by parliamentarians who are invested in listening to the voices of young people. Here with us now is Member of Parliament Faisal El Khoury and Member of Parliament Paul Manley. There may be time for some questions directed towards our parliamentarians at the end. So now the ever helpful Alyssa from Cisco will quickly show us how to raise our hands. Hey Alyssa. Hi everyone. So if you'd like to raise your hand as an attendee, you should be able to right click on your name and there should be an option. Perfect, I see some people already doing it. Naomi testing it out, Tammy testing it out. Great job guys. So if we see your hands raised, that's how we'll know you have a question. And Sagni, do you wanna let us know how we're gonna uh, call on people? Um, yeah, I think um, either myself or Camille can maybe call people out or uh, maybe Hannah could call people out if they have their hands raised. I haven't seen any raised hands yet, but I can definitely look out for them. Okay, thanks, Hannah. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, Alyssa. Uh, for the parliamentarians that have joined us, we just spent an hour talking in small groups about the topics of our environment, where we live, eat, sleep, and play in relation to Article 24 of the UNCRC, uh, which says that children have the right to the best health care possible, clean water to drink, healthy food, and a clean and safe environment to live in. All adults and children should have information about how to stay safe and healthy. And groups discuss the topic of food, clothing, and a safe home, which is Article 27 of the UNCRC. We then spent the last hour getting to know each other more and bringing together our key themes, which we're looking forward to sharing with you now. We will start with a group so focused on the topic of the environment and then move to food, clothing, and safety. Group representatives will have three minutes per person to share. If you are the person sharing, please keep an eye on your chat box. You will receive a chat message when you have 30 seconds left so you know to wrap up. Hey Maddie, you could unmute yourself and we encourage you to turn your video on. Please go ahead and introduce yourself as well. You have three minutes to present just like Camille told us. And remember that at two minutes and 30 seconds, you'll see a message in your chat box to warn you that your time is wrapping up. Take it away. All right, thank you. My name is Maddie, and I will be talking about what the Environment Group has been discussing for the last hour. So these are just some of the main points that we ended up coming up with, is um, how COVID is affecting people mentally and their environment um, because people have been laid off or they've completely lost their jobs. Uh, they've been isolating, they've been away from resources and also from family members as well during COVID. And a whole bunch of people are in a whole bunch of different situations throughout Canada, and some are harder than others. Um, some people are in cities, some people are in countries, um, so everyone is a little bit different. Um, and also we were talking about um, how the government is going to take action uh, to help the environment um, in Indigenous communities um, and how they could sort of uh, prove, improve situations that um, maybe can be difficult in some communities as well. Um, and also in uh, some communities, big companies um, are allowing people to like completely like take their water and resell it uh, for a higher price. Um, and then that's just putting more plastic into um, just the environment. And then if it's not in landfill, sometimes it can be pushed out into the ocean, also polluting the ocean as well. And then it does not decompose. Um, and just the last final thing is climate change and how it affects people's mental health and finances also during COVID, but maybe let's say there's a storm or a hurricane and then they have to figure out how they can support themselves if they can't get into work, if their car has been damaged or if their house has been damaged as well, um, and just mental health during that as well. Awesome. Thanks so much, Maddie. That was some really, really great insights. You're uh, welcome. Thanks. Of course, we also had one group discussing these topics in French today. Megan will now be speaking on those. Hey, Megan, you can unmute yourself and we encourage you to turn your video on. Please go ahead. You have three minutes to present and remember, you'll see a message in your chat box when you have 30 seconds left so that you know to wrap up. Okay, so uh, je vais présenter en français. Je vais activer uh, 
le partage d'écran pour que vous puissiez tous voir sur quoi on a travaillé. Euh, donc, nous, notre sujet était nourriture, vêtements et maisons sûres. Euh, en petit résumé, on a parlé euh, surtout de l'inégalité entre les régions pour le genre de services euh, que les gens peuvent avoir, ainsi qu'au niveau de la pandémie, comment ça a affecté l'accès à la nourriture, les vêtements et les maisons sûres. Je vais partir avec quatre points principaux pour les solutions qu'on aimerait implémenter. Donc, euh, une aide aux communautés qui pourrait passer à la fois par une formation pour le personnel pour leur permettre de maximiser et optimiser leurs ressources au lieu de leur donner plus de fonds. Ils sachent seulement comment bien exploiter ce qu'ils ont déjà et de créer une ligne directrice euh, nationale afin que ça soit plus équilibré partout dans chacune des provinces. On aimerait aussi qu'un réseau d'aide soit établi pour aider les familles et les enfants qui pourraient passer euh, par les visites dans les milieux des enfants, donc chez eux, afin d'interagir avec les parents, s'assurer que les enfants ont assez de nourriture, de vêtements, et que s'il si y a un déficit qui est observé, qu'on peut se mettre en contact, les adultes, les gardiens ou les parents, en contact avec des organismes qui peuvent les aider. Ensuite, on veut qu'une aide soit pour tous. Donc, il y a eu un programme de bénévolat fédéral qui a été créé récemment. On aimerait que ce programme-là puisse cibler Yeah. Hi, folks. Have we lost Megan? Believe so. Okay. Let's uh, move on. And Megan, if there's a bit more to say, maybe we can come back to her afterward. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Actually, one second. Alyssa has uh, something to add to that. Okay, so um, Melissa, you were in a, a group with Megan. Would you mind maybe adding any final comments to what she presented? Can everybody hear me first of all? Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so back to the PowerPoint. I'll continue in French then. Uh, donc, ce que Megan présentait, c'était notre troisième uh, initiative. Uh, C'est uh, que le programme de bénévolat pour les jeunes devrait cibler Um, surtout les jeunes uh, et aussi um, que le gouvernement pourrait promouvoir certaines organisations ou associations uh, avec qui collaborer et aussi s'assurer que les subventions données aux familles soient équitables et inclusives. Donc, uh, par exemple, inclure aussi um, pour encourager les écoliers, aussi ceux qui font l'école à la maison, etc. Voilà. I'm done. All right, thank you so much to Maddie for sharing your insights. Et merci aussi à Megan et Melissa pour vos idées et commentaires, etc. Now we will move on to hearing from our groups on okay. food, clothing. Oh, hey, Megan. <laughs> I, I think was you're... out. Yes. Um, oh, my God. Est-ce que tu veux uh, ajouter quelques idées uh, rapidement? Euh, J'ai aucune idée de ce qui a été dit, mais je suis confiance à Mélissa. Je suis convaincue qu'elle a très bien fait ça. Euh, je suis vraiment désolée, je n'ai aucune idée de ce qui s'est passé. C'est correct. Um, Mél um, Mélissa était en train de et je pense qu'elle a ajouté quelques idées. Oui. Alors, nous allons continuer avec euh, notre agenda. C'est parfait, merci. All right, so um, now we'll move on to... Uh, Roman, who will be speaking in English and presenting for the Food, Clothing, and Safe Home Group. Roman, you can unmute yourself, and we encourage you to turn your video on as well. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, remember that you have three minutes to speak, and you'll notice a message in the chat box when you have 30 seconds left. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Roman Wolfley, coming to you from Calgary. I'll tell you more, I'll tell you more about myself, but we only have three minutes here, so I'm just going to... Go here and share my screen so that everyone here can see what we've done in, in our group. So these are some, some takeaways that we got from this. Uh, even though we weren't uh, the environment group, 
we wanted to recognize that climate change, it will have a very, very serious effect if it goes unchecked on access to food, clothing in a safe home. And because of that, we really want to emphasize that we believe it's super, super important. And we, we really want the government to make sure it sticks to their, their goal, to their goal to be net zero by 2050. We also want to add that that it is our right to have information around climate change in the environment, and we want the government to make sure that, that we have this. Um, we also want to add that the government should also make sure that, that we have, uh, they uphold our right to be informed about uh, not just not just kids, but also their families about the opportunities that exist to access uh, supplemental resources for people who don't have necessarily enough food or clothing or, or a safe home. And uh, so we, we also believe, we believe that this, this thing about being informed for kids and families is very, very important. Uh, we also think that it's, it's possible that the government can have a better uh, solution for families uh, experiencing problems with food insecurity. Um, but also we would like the government to make sure that the adults in our lives, the adults who care for us kids, uh, have adequate money and food and money to support us with food and clothing and a safe place to live without having a significant struggle. So those are the those are the key things we touched on. It was a very fruitful discussion, and we're very glad we had the opportunity to share the outcome uh, with you. Thanks so much, Roman. That was great. Um, thank you to all of our groups and their youth presenters for sharing their valuable and important input, and also to our parliamentarians who are also here and taking the time to lend their ears to their uh, comments and ideas. We're grateful that you guys could join us today. Now, um, speaking on our parliamentarians, we have some questions for you guys, and you all know what that means. It means we're in question period time. So this is our last segment for today's event. Each of these Terrible. questions were selected from young people uh, who registered to join our event today. Phil, would you like to ask a There was some overlap in the audio. I'll just repeat my, uh, I'll just repeat what I said there. Sorry. Um, this is our last segment for today's event. Each of these questions were selected from young people who registered for uh, our uh, event today. Uh, Camille, would you like to ask our first question? Camille, you're on mute still. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. Uh, so our first question of the day is for a member of parliament, Paul Manley. Uh, do we have a plan so we can both restart the economy and care for the environment? In other words, what should be done to create a new, better, more sustainable economy? Well, first of all, it's great to listen to these reports and to see young people engaged in politics and engaged in these ideas. It's really important uh, that you're stepping up and doing this work and your voice is important. And um, I got engaged as a, as a young person myself into politics and into environmental activism and social justice activism. So get on you, you are the future leaders of this country. Um, yes, we, we need to have a plan that, in, that incorporates environmental um, issues with the recovery plan. I don't think there is a plan in place yet. You know, we haven't heard of one. We're, we're working with the government and uh, I send emails to government ministers and uh, give them ideas. The Green Party has put out a recovery plan that looks at some of these issues. When we're talking about an economic recovery because of uh, the shutdown from COVID, we need uh, stimulus funding that invigorates the economy. And there's a report that was done uh, that it, by a couple of uh, a few economists, including uh, Nicholas Stern and uh, award uh, Nobel Prize winner um, Joseph Stiglitz. And they looked at this issue. They put out this report uh, in the Oxford uh, Review of Economic Policy back on the 4th of May. And they did interviews with the uh, chief economists, uh, the the um, heads of um, central banks, with the finance ministers of uh, all the G20 countries, and they looked at what would be the best things for stimulus 
uh, coming out of this COVID-19 economic crisis. And, um, you know, some of the best stimulus packages are environmental programs. And so they talked about, uh, uh, you, you know, building renewable infrastructure. So renewable energy, um, wind, solar, geothermal, um, and building those kind of plants, there's a lot of work on the front end that could put people back to work and uh, maximize the the number of jobs per dollar that you would get for that stimulus spending. But then those that kind of infrastructure doesn't need a lot of maintenance and doesn't need a lot of work afterwards. And so those workers could go back into the other parts of the economy that have slowed down so that you use the stimulus funding to hop in, fire up the economy by getting this infrastructure that we need to uh, re gear our um, our economy to more, to a more renewable economy and away from fossil fuels. And then we would have that infrastructure in place and those workers could then go back into other parts of the economy. One of the other things that, uh, so they looked at a whole bunch of different things on a chart. What creates the most employment for dollar spent and gets us into dealing with the climate issue as well. And one of the other things was to uh, retrofit buildings. And that's that's not just homes, but institutions, schools, hospitals, and that creates a lot of employment as well. So it creates a lot of employment. Then uh, once that work is done, we're, we're saving money on energy in our public institutions. We're uh, helping the environment because we're using less energy. And once that work is done, those workers can then move on to do other things because that's, you know, those kind of jobs are a one off. And but there's there's uh, so much work to be done. Our hospitals, most the average age of a hospital in Canada is 50 years old. Uh, it's 69 years old in our cities. And there's a lot of infrastructure like that that could save us money in the long run. Um, I haven't been keeping track of my time. I could carry on for quite a while. So you'll have to just, you want to just flag me when I'm done, Camille, or is that good? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's a lot of different a lot of different stimulus that we can that we can work on, and of course, like we you know heard talking about the mental health crisis, um, and and um, there's a real need for more spending with mental health and a deeper integration with um, our healthcare system. I think you know people have to pay for counseling now. Unless you're living in poverty, then you can then you can get some counseling sessions, but that's a barrier to people getting. Uh, mental health in the early stages of when they're when they're having problems. Otherwise, you know, you let let something exacerbate and then it becomes a crisis and somebody's going into the hospital system and then it's much more expensive to deal with. So there's there's areas that we can stimulate around social programs and helping people through the recovery. But there is lots of of work that can be done to improve uh, the the infrastructure to protect our environment, to deal with the climate crisis that we're in and take us into the future of our, our renewable energy economy. And we, of course, are feeding those ideas to the to uh, liberal members of parliament and to the the, um, the ministers. So, yeah, I'd like to say hello to Faisal for who's joining us here today too. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, um, Member of Parliament Manley, for your response. Um, today's next question is for Member of Parliament Faisal El Khoury. Um, bien que notre environnement change et qu'un plus grand nombre de personnes exigent pour des mesures qui luttent contre le changement climatique, que fera le gouvernement pour aider ceux qui sont vulnérables et marginalisés de la société? à vous tous. Merci et bon après-midi à vous tous. Permettez-moi d'abord de vous remercier de m'avoir convoqué à cet événement d'importance. Cette initiative permet à nos enfants et jeunes de participer dans la prise de décision et d'être entendus. Pour répondre à votre question, j'aimerais signaler que le Canada se réchauffe deux fois plus vite que la moyenne mondiale et encore plus vite dans le nord, les changements climatiques constituent une menace réelle 
et urgente pour notre environnement, notre nature, notre santé et notre économie aussi. Aussi, les Canadiens ressentent déjà les effets de ces changements climatiques et une nette majorité de Canadiens a voté en faveur d'une action climatique ambitieuse. En effet, le coût de l'inaction face au changement climatique sera énorme. Et c'est pourquoi notre gouvernement a pris des mesures réelles, efficaces, vigoureuses et pratiques. Notre gouvernement a fixé un objectif d'émission nette zéro d'ici 2050. Cette émission net zéro d'ici 2050 est tellement importante pour notre environnement. Cet objectif est ambitieux, mais nécessaire tant pour la protection de l'environnement que pour la croissance économique. Le gouvernement aide également à rendre plus adorable à rendre plus abordable les logements à haut rendement énergétique et introduit des mesures visant à construire des communautés propres, efficaces et abordables. Le gouvernement travaille fort afin de rendre l'énergie propre et abordable disponible dans toutes les communautés canadiennes. De même, il préserve le patrimoine naturel du Canada en protégeant 25 des terres, 25 des océans du Canada d'ici 2025. En plus, concernant les personnes marginalisées et qui font face à la réalité du racisme, malgré que le Canada soit un pays ouvert et dont la diversité fait partie intégrante de notre système, il reste toujours des mesures à prendre. C'est pour cela que notre gouvernement a investi 45 millions de dollars pour mettre en place une stratégie antiracisme. Un secrétariat antiracisme a été créé pour aider les organisations fédérales à résoudre les problèmes de racisme et de dis discrimination. Ainsi qu'à trouver du financement communautaire afin de les aider à éliminer les, les obstacles à l'emploi, à la justice et à la participation sociale. De même, nous avons une campagne nationale d'éducation et de sensibilisation du, pub, du public. Je peux vous dire finalement que je peux vous assurer et assurer tous les Canadiens et tous les jeunes parlementaires que notre gouvernement est déterminé à collaborer avec nos partenaires nationaux et internationaux pour prendre des mesures énergétiques afin de réduire la pollution dans le monde entier. Je vous encourage, vous êtes l'avenir du Canada et on compte beaucoup sur vous. Merci encore de m'avoir invité. Je dois saluer aussi mon collègue. Merci pour votre participation. Merci, euh, Monsieur El Khoury, euh, pour votre respons, euh, réponse. And uh, just to summarize uh, what was mentioned in his response, um, the government has uh, allocated uh, funds to help uh, address things like climate change and uh, the environment. Um, and is working to uh, help resolve issues in that regard, and has also allocated uh, $45 million to develop an anti-racism program and to address disparities within that, uh, within um, those areas uh, of need um, and discrimination and, um, and different uh, treatment of people in different marginalized groups. And uh, he also very much enjoys coming in here today and hearing all of your ideas and seeing all the youth. Uh, sharing their ideas as well. Thank awesome. You. Thank, thanks so much, Sagni. Thank you, uh, Member of Parliament El Khoury. Um, we have a few minutes left today. Um, so if anyone from the audience has any comments or any questions that they would like to end us off with, uh, now would be the time to raise your hand. I believe Alyssa from Cisco will be keeping track of who raises their hands and will be able to coordinate that. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand now.
Zaya, go ahead. You've been unmuted. Thank you so much. Um, so my question was that Canada mostly depends on importing foods and goods from other places like the United States and Mexico. Um, and my question would be that what are we going to do as a government to create a self-sufficient supply of foods so that in the future we don't have to depend on other countries to import foods for us? Thank you. Uh, maybe a member of parliament, uh, Manly, maybe you uh, could answer that question. Sure. Um, yeah, so Canada exports is a net exporter of food, but what we, we export are, um, you know, bulk crops. So wheat, barley, uh, canola, corn, and uh, meat like pork and beef. But we do rely on um, other countries for a lot of the food that we consume right here. And where where I represent Vancouver Island, um, Nanaimo Ladysmith is on Vancouver Island. We only produce five percent of the food that we consume here. And so there's been a real move to to recreate a local food system. Fifty years ago, it would have been seventy five to eighty percent of the food that was consumed here was grown here. And there was a uh, we were a net exporter before that. So we're trying to rebuild our local food system and that uh, means supporting local farmers. Um, we don't have the great big open fields that they have in the prairies. We have a lot of small farms. Um, and you know the the idea is to get as much support for them as possible so that we can produce a lot of food here. And I live in a great growing area and there's no reason why we should be um, food for for pretty much most of the year and if we localize our diets more then we're less dependent on trying to get you know tomatoes in january for example but the green party believes that what we should be doing is localizing food as much as possible right across canada um, my mother-in-law lived in the yukon and she could grow garlic there so there's no reason to import garlic <laughs> into this country at all uh, you know, we we could be um, doing a lot more in terms of um, having greenhouses that are heated through geothermal and uh, renewable energy in in localized localized areas around near all of our cities, and uh, and be growing much more food for our populations. We we rely on cheap food from elsewhere from Mexico, from China, from California, from Florida. And right now we're seeing, you know, we've had a crisis in personal protective equipment and we've relied on supply chains for that from other places. And we see what happens when we rely on those supply chains. We're seeing farms shut down in California and in Florida and in Ontario and in, in uh, Mexico and other places where we rely on imported food. And if we don't uh, take care of this issue, um, we're going to, we could see problems here as well. And also localizing food lowers the carbon footprint on our food. So it's a key element of dealing with climate change is to ensure that we have as much food locally as, as possible. We have, you know, in some cases, some food items passing in the night in semi trailers. Uh, we're importing the same food that we're exporting and that, I don't know how that makes any sense. Thank you so much. Um, I also, just before we uh, continue on with the hands, uh, would like to say if you have any final things that you'd like to share on these topics and not a question, uh, you can also raise your hand to share those at this time as well. To, so just please keep that in mind. Rebecca, go ahead. You've been unmuted. Hello? Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Okay. Um, since the government responded so quickly and is still updating the guidelines for COVID-19, what keeps the government from responding so quickly to the environmental crisis? So even though it's a little bit more difficult to see the results of some environmental um, initiatives, what keeps the government from initiating multiple environmental programs during the year? And what can we do to make these quicker? Awesome. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, uh, either member, um, this question is, I guess, posed to either of you. 
Uh, so if either if either of you have um, an answer, please go ahead. I'll take it. Yes, thank you so Can much. I? Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you. Th thank you for answering this good question. As you know, Canada was the leading country in asking to meet in Paris to do the summit to protect the environment. Last year, our government directly uh, was involved in announcing to plant 10, 2 billion trees during 10 years, I believe. We are taking a step for zero emission from now to 2050. We are cleaning our oceans, our air, our lake. We are doing our best for the recycling process. So Canada is working actively in protecting the environment, but we're counting on you. And now I appeal on you as young parliamentarian, I would like to get a promise from everyone of you to promise me to plant a tree in his backyard if you have a house. If not, go to your friend, to your cousin, to, to your neighbor and try to plant a tree in order to help Canada in protecting the environment. We are nothing backing, but we are nothing backing from protecting the environment. We're doing at high speed. Of course, it's not as well as we're doing for COVID-19, because you know COVID-19 is an emergency, top urgent situation, and we have to protect lives here. Protecting lives, we have to be alert, and the government is doing its best. But I could assure you, me and my colleague. And all the parliamentarian, all the government of Canada, that's priority for our government and for the generations to come, for all the Canadian environment is number one priority after this COVID. And we believe that protecting the environment will make our country cleaner, healthier, greener, and that's also help our economy. That will stimulate our economy, and that will make the living standard of Canadian one of the best in the world as we are now. So be proud of being Canadian and do your best in order to make from this country and to continue to make it the best in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Member Elkwiri. You have my promise that I will definitely plant a tree. Um, Alyssa, we're ready for the next. <laughs> uh, Alyssa, we're ready for the next question. Thank you. But no go ahead. You're unmuted. Um, how does COVID nineteen pos positively and negatively impact? climate change. Awesome. Thanks, Vincent. Um, Member Manley, maybe you can take this one? Sure. So one of the things that uh, scientists and epidemiologists have been warning about for decades is that in increased climate change and increased environmental degradation was going to lead to pandemics like this because we we rely on the environment and the biosphere uh, for for our good health, and so you know this is um, partly a consequence of the of population growth of environmental de degradation. We've had pandemics in the past, of course, and we've realized uh, in the past, like with the plague, that uh, dumping sewage onto the street was a really bad idea. You know, so that you know we as as uh, civilizations you know, learned and grew, we, we figured out how to deal with these kinds of things. We've seen uh, with the pandemic that um, in places where the economy shut down, where there was a lot of air pollution before, people could see blue skies. And, and um, so, you know, slowing down the economy has had a beneficial effect to the environment because our economy is, is really driven by fossil fuels, by the burning of coal for electricity, by burning fossil fuels to power vehicles, et cetera. And I think that 
a lot of people have realized that we, we need to do things in a better way. It gives us the opportunity to look at how we rebuild our economy and with climate change in mind. And it also, you know, going back to the previous question, allows us to think if we can move so quickly in a pandemic, why can't we move so quickly with climate change? If we can listen to the health authorities, uh, you know, the provincial health authorities and the federal health authorities telling us what we need to do to, to slow the spread of this um, COVID-19, then we should be listening to scientists in the same way. Uh, you know, we, we weren't uh, listening to Bonnie Henry and going, she's saying we need to be two meters apart and the politicians weren't saying, well, maybe a meter is okay, you know, or maybe, maybe half a meter is all right. We decided that we were going to listen to, to those health experts, to Bonnie Henry in the case of British Columbia, and, and follow those instructions. And I think we need to listen to scientists in the same way when it comes to climate change. And so we're seeing that we can, we've learned that we can move quickly in a crisis, and climate change is a slow moving crisis, and environmental degradation and the loss of biodiversity, those are things that we need to address, and we need to address them quickly, because otherwise, uh, people your age are going to be dealing with the consequences uh, for a lo much longer period than I will. And I've got children and, and a grandchild now, and I want to make sure that uh, we leave this uh, earth in, in the best possible condition that we can. And I think we've learned a lot about how we can move quickly from, from this COVID crisis. Awesome. Thank you so much, Member Manley. Um, I would like to just tell everybody that we might not be able to get through um, all of the questions that you have to ask um, and that all of the things that you have to say, because I'm sure everybody has lots of things that they would like to ask, um, but we do have to get moving real quick. We have time for one more question. So, Alyssa, if you could pick the last one, that'd be great. Absolutely. We have a tons more in the pipeline, which is so great to hear, but Vera, I'm going to give you the last the last question. So go ahead, you're unmuted. Vera, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Um, uh, my question is. Um, all um, artists have been negatively impacted due to COVID-19. How is the government um, supporting local arts and pro, um, promoting Canadian culture? Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, Member El Khoury, maybe you could take this one. Yes, uh, can you repeat the question please because I'm on the phone, I am not hearing 100%. Sure, no problem. Uh, Vera, could you please repeat the question? Um, yep. Yeah. Um, all our um, artists have been negatively impacted due to COVID-19. How is the government supporting local arts and promoting Canadian culture? Yes, it's thanks for this question. I believe the government of Canada is taking care of our artists and supporting our Canadian culture. And uh, I have the uh, minister, we have two ministers, the minister of uh, heritage, is taking care of these things and uh, I believe there is an amount of money is uh, is granted for for this particular field in arts and for uh, improving and encouraging uh, our culture uh, from cinema to uh, theaters uh, to uh, uh, everything relating to culture the government of Canada is believing that uh, promoting our culture and uh, uh, keeping an eye in, in, in helping our artists, uh, it is our values and we will never ever as Canadians downsize our value either in arts or in, in anything related to our culture. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you also to Vera and all the other youth who had comments or questions. Um, they were great. Um, all right, Camille, do you want to wrap us up here? Sure, absolutely. Um, okay, just going to make sure I'm not on mute. 
Um, a big thank you uh, once again to everybody uh, for coming out today and participating. It truly means a lot to see so many passionate peers wanting to initiate real change across our country. As a young person witnessing the amazing discussions that we've had today, um, I've been astonished and it has both inspired and energized me to get out into my community and start tangibly initiating change in ways that address the issues we have ad advocated for today. Um, it is truly incredible. Uh, we look forward to hearing about your feedback um, and seeing all the actions you take in a survey that will be sent out um, following the conclusion of our event. Okay, if you, are, if you allow me, I would like to address uh, two words to those parliamentarians, younger parliamentarians. Is it possible? Uh, yes, Member Okuri, go ahead. Yes. Again, thanks for the invitation. So, you young parliamentarian, you have to know that we count on you. You are the future of Canada. You are the lifeblood of Canada and the beating heart of Canada. This beautiful country will be on your hand. And I hope and I am sure the way you're living in this country and the way you're working hard to improve life condition, to protect the environment, to grow the economy, to create jobs for Canadians, to make Canada the best in the world, you have to hand it to your children, to our children, and to make it better. And remember, our right honorable, the Prime Minister of Canada said, better is always possible. Thank you very much. Thank you for those beautiful words, Member El Khoury. Thank you so much. We would also like to acknowledge the Government of Canada's support for Young Canadians Parliament and Gail O'Brien, TELUS, and Cisco for their sponsorship of this event. Today would not have been possible without partnership, without the partnership, sorry, of Children First Canada's Youth Advisory Council, Youth Ambassadors, Elaine Chiknowich, uh, and Wisdom to Action. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, with closed captioning services provided by VTAC and simultaneous interpretation in French provided by the Language Marketplace. We look forward to seeing you at our next YCP event happening August 27th on the topics of Children's Commissioner. What if we had an advocate for all children in Canada and equity? What gets in the way of, getting, of you getting access to the things you need? Thank you again, everyone, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.